Now that we've learned how to make a method and the system has been equilibrated, let's go ahead and start an injection. First we'll learn how to do a single injection and then we'll learn about sequence injections. To do a single injection, go to view, change the acquisition mode, and change it to single run, or confirm that it is already in single run mode. Once you're in single run mode, you'll notice one change. The third view is now called single run monitor as opposed to acquisition sequence monitor. And When you click on that, you'll see your single run information that you'll enter in below. To simplify this, we'll click on Arrange Panels. Arrange Panels allows us to take away a lot of the data analysis information that we don't necessarily need to include when running a sample. After we learn more about the data analysis features, we can input these into the table and it will automatically integrate as the sample is running. But for now, let's remove all those unnecessary ones. By clicking the left arrow, and we'll move sample number, aka vial number, back over to the right side. And we'll click OK. You'll notice that it, it has simplified the information we have to put in. The first step is to enter in a sequence name. A sequence name typically is just the date. However, if you're going to run this sequence again and again, you can specify the name of that so you can open it at a later time and rerun the sequence. Again, we're currently just running single runs, so the date is a very common entry. The next thing to enter is the chromatogram name. The way this names the chromatogram is you'll see test sample, an underscore, and then an ID number of one that's three digits long. For example, test sample underscore zero zero one. You'll next select whether you want to do any repeats. We're just simply going to do one injection, so we leave it at one. The control method will enter in by hitting the dot 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 and pressing open. We'll then select the particular control method that we want to use to run the sample. The next step is to set the acquisition time. The acquisition time needs to be 0.2 minutes less than the control method. That 0.2 minutes allows the software to save and do any data analysis. So in this case we'll put 4.8 as the method, as you can see, is five minutes long. We'll next need to set the injection volume. In this case, we're injecting 20 microliters. The last step is the vial number. We'll be running from vial position number one in the auto sampler, so we leave it at number one. If we are to do repeats, for instance, two, this would repeat vial number one twice. Otherwise, if we change this increment to one, it will first do vial number one, and then it will increment by one, meaning the second injection will do vial number two. But again, we're just doing a single injection, so we'll leave the repeats at one and increment by zero. If you just want to run the method and do not want to have the auto sampler do an injection, just simply check the box for no injection and it will immediately start the method once you click the start button above. Again, we're going to inject from vial position number one, so we'll leave that unchecked. Now that we've entered this information in, we simply click the run button. You'll notice now the system status says run. It has filled in all the sequence information, and on the left side the auto sampler started to flush meaning it's washing the needle before it picks up the sample. While it's doing this, we can go check the chromatogram. As you can see, the auto sampler has now moved to the load position, meaning it's got the sample loop in line with the needle and it's picking up sample. The injection should occur shortly.
at oh, any time during the run once it is injected, we can go to System Monitor and change the current conditions. For instance, if we want to change the percentage or the flow rate, we can change those on the fly by simply clicking the wrench and screwdriver and changing the value you wish to change. Again, we can change different views, looking at independent wavelengths or detectors. We can stack those wavelengths or detectors, or we can overlay them and look at them all in one window. We'll look at the stack view to see which particular wavelength is the best for our compounds of interest. As you can see on the left, the first wavelength is 220 nanometers. The second channel is 254 nanometers. The third channel, 280 nanometers. And the fourth channel, 310. Now, as you can see, the auto sampler has injected the sample. As shown in the methods, the detector channels have all auto zeroed. And you can see the acquisition time shows 0.3 minutes of 5 minute total. Now we'll continue to watch as the peak should start to elute. You can see one of our first peaks. Now during the run, you can hit the edit or stop button to stop the acquisition. You can hit the pump stop button to stop the actual pumps. And as this is not a PDA detector, we can take spectra. The spectral feature is capable of running in the four channel wavelength detect that we're using currently, the 2077, the variable wavelength UV 2075 or 2070, the CD detector, as well as the FP, allowing you to do spectral scanning when the peaks elute and get more spectral information. As a peak elutes, we'll show you how this works. Here comes our second peak. We'll go ahead and show you how nice that peak looks. And wait for the third peak, and we'll do a spectral scan on that. As it starts to elute, we click the spec button. And what you'll see is our first wavelength is no longer looking at just 220. It has done the scan. And what we see that pops up is the spectral analysis window. So for this particular peak, which has a retention time of 1.93, and of course we see our sample name, we have our spectra for that particular compound. If we'd like to save it, file, save as, and we can call this peak number three, as that was the third one to loot, or you can put a retention time stamp on it and a sample name, however you'd like to name it. Click Save, and now we can close it and go back to our chromatogram. We see our fourth peak is starting to elute, and we can watch that. Now in this test mix, there are only four compounds, so our analysis has completed. We do not need to wait till the end of the run to stop it, so simply click Edit. It will warn us, are you sure you want to stop data collection? You simply say yes. 
Now the pumps will continue to run, as shown by the system status, until you stop them. If you'd like to run the sample again, you can click the start button. Otherwise, we can stop the pumps as we're finished. We can flush the auto sampler if we'd like. And we're ready to go to the data analysis side. But one thing first, let's go check on that spectra and show you a little bit more. To open that spectra, go to File and start Spectra Manager. You'll see that comes up. Go to File, Open, and now we select the peak we just ran the spectrum of. Now if we want to overlay a peak, such as with another peak that is eluded, or the same peak during a different run, simply click File, Overlay, and pick the peak you want to overlay it with, or spectra you want to overlay. Click Open, and now you'll see this particular spectra has been overlaid. Now in this example, the one named Peak 1 was actually just some baseline. And as you can see, we see some significant absorbance from our peak number 3 that alluded in the previous uh, chromatogram. Once you're finished with this analysis, you can of course close it. A few other things you may want to do, you can zoom in on certain regions. In this case, we could say by clicking, or unzooming, and clicking that our particular wavelength that's the strongest is 211 nanometers. Another good wavelength, 270 nanometers. If we close this, what we'll notice is that 220, as expected, would be pretty strong. 254 is not too far from 270. And of course, we are running 280, so that's pretty close as well. So at all three of these, we see a pretty good strong wavelength. Now if we'd like to stop the pump, simply click Pump Stop. And the system is now ready to go into a standby mode as you've stopped the pumps. Now we're going to learn about an acquisition sequence. So we'll first need to start the pumps again. Monitor the baseline and hit OK.